All right, today I'm going to show you how to do a complete bearing assembly change out on a Bell & Gusset Series 60 small bearing frame pump. What you want to do is you want to shut your power off to the pump first. And then what you want to do is you want to close your service valves to the pump. Now even though you close the service valves, you're still going to have pressure here. But I'll get to that in a minute. What you want to do is you want to come back here and you want to take the electrical box cover off. And this is uh, so you can unwire it and work on it on a, on a bench somewhere so you don't have to hold on to it while it's in the air. Just uh, take note and write down what colored wires are hooked to what wires and disconnect them. Then you're ready to take the pump apart. Okay, now we're ready to take the, uh, the pump out of the volute. And what we'll do, now you still have system pressure here. I like to loosen these bolts just a little bit. Now you might want to have a bucket underneath here on the floor or wherever this is positioned in your system and just loosen these uh, bolts until it starts to drip a little bit and it'll start to relieve some of the pressure on the volute body. Now once it starts to drip, you might have to take a break for 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes. And then once it stops dripping, you can loosen them, but don't take them out. That way, if there's any excess pressure or water, it'll kind of drip out. Okay, now that you have them loose, what you can do is just kind of grab the whole pump and wiggle it. And as it separates from the volute body, the rest of the water will pour out, and then you can undo these bolts. I suggest you leave a couple of bolts in the top side. That way it won't sag when you start to loosen the rest of them. Just kind of cradle your arm underneath. Make sure the pump isn't too hot to hold with a bare hand. Just kind of support it. Take your last bolt out and set it down and you can separate the pump out of the volute. Like so. Now you can set it on your workbench. And now we'll take the bearing assembly and we'll uh, detach it from the motor bracket. Okay, now that we've got it loose, it kind of wants to separate, so just kind of squeeze the brackets together. Take your last bolt out. Now when you set it upright, like so, you're going to see that the coupler has to be taken off. So we'll remove that. I just like to remove it from both sides. Separate the motor and set it aside. Take the coupler off of the bearing assembly by going through these little air veins in the side of the cast. And just unscrew it enough so it pops off the shaft. And now's a good time to inspect it for grooving or wear. Be a good time to change it if you think it needs to be changed. If it's good, set it aside and we'll reuse it. All right, now that we've got the coupler set aside, we're going to need to take the impeller off. So you're going to take a screwdriver, and just insert it in the vein and put a little down pressure on it. Take your ratchet and loosen the nut that's inside here. Take an extension, slide it over and just unscrew the acorn nut. And then just so you don't drop it inside the impeller, tip it upside down. Let them drop onto your bench. This one has an acorn nut and a star lock washer. Some will differ. Now sometimes these impellers can be tough uh, to get off the uh, bearing assembly shaft. Uh, and this one is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Jason give me a hand here. And I'll show you how to uh, get it off the shaft without using a puller and damaging this impeller. 
because you're changing the bearing assembly, you don't have to worry about what you might hurt on the shaft of the bearing assembly or even the seal kit because you're changing the whole thing out. All right, I'll put my fingers and hold the impeller from the back side like so. Jason's going to take a hefty Phillips screwdriver or a punch and what he's going to do is he's going to put it on the end of the shaft and he's going to hit it while I hold it up in the air and my hands will act kind of like a puller on the back side of the impeller. And as you can see, it might take a couple, two, three hits to uh, get the impeller to come off the shaft. Spring, washer for the impeller. You can just throw it away with your whole bearing assembly. And we'll go get a new one. All right, we've got the new bearing assembly set up in front of us. Now, because it's the new so style Series 60, and it has ball bearing construction, we don't have to worry about the sleeve bearings letting the shaft float. So we don't need a block on the back side of this shaft here to hold the seal kit in place. We can just take the new bearing assembly with your existing impeller and find the keyway on the shaft and set it in place. And with some good force, jam it down as far as it'll go until you hear that nice click at the end. Now that you've got the impeller all the way down on the shaft with that nice little click at the end, you want to hold it in place so that seal kit spring stays in place while you put your lock washer back on in the acorn nut on this end of the shaft, holding the impeller in place. If you notice it fell off to the side and all I do is wiggle it into place then grab your socket with an extension and start to screw it on the end of the shaft. Because you've got it finger tight and the acorn nut is pushing down on the washer and the impeller you can let go and it won't go anywhere. Now you can take your ratchet and tighten that acorn nut. What I like to do is just a screwdriver in the vein, just like when you were taking it off. And just snug it. You don't need to over tighten it. Just snug it up real good. Just a little twist. Now that we've got the impeller in place, we're ready to put the gasket on the cover plate that also comes with the bearing assembly. Put it in the groove. No grease or anything on the gasket. It should stay on its own. Now when you go to put it back in the volute body, you want to make the face, make sure that the face of the volute here is nice and clean. Of course, I'm cheating because I'm using a brand new pump. But you want to make sure that none of the old gasket is stuck around this rim at all. Make sure it's good and cleaned off. And then what we can do is we can take the bearing assembly. And if you notice on the bearing assembly, it'll tell you which side goes up. just in case you goof up. There's drain holes in case the seal kit leaks. As long as they're at 6 and 12 o'clock, it really doesn't matter if you put it like this or if you put it like this. But staying with the norm, we'll put it in like this, making sure our gasket's in place and very carefully sliding it back into place. Lining up your bolt holes, making sure that it's up and hold it into place, making sure that you don't see any gasket in any of the bolt holes. Then you can put your bolt holes back in. And then you can put your bolts back in. I like to get a couple of them in place and just finger tighten them and then you can go around and just put the rest in place. Okay, now that I've got them all finger tight, I'll tighten them down and I like to crisscross, kind of like when you're changing your tires on your car. What I will do is I will tighten them from the top. And what I didn't mention before was the reason why you don't want to use any grease on the gasket or any silicone or anything like that is 
You don't want any of that getting into the, into the water part of the pump and possibly going across the seal face because it will ruin the seal. All right, now that we've got that tight and in place, instead of putting the motor back on, what we want to do, because you're only this far back into putting it back together, you want to open up the system and make sure that it's not leaking. That way you only have to go back into here instead of taking the motor off of here also. So what you want to do is you want to open up your valves. I usually like to open the top one first and open it as slow as possible. And then the bottom one you open also as slow as possible. Let the system pressure build inside the pump. You'll probably hear the water leaving the pump. And this is where you can check for leaks. If it's not leaking, then we can put the motor on. Also, when you fill something this small, it shouldn't affect the system pressure of your, of your system. But it's a good idea after you run the pump for a while in the system to check your system pressure. All right, now we're going to put the coupler back on, and I like to put the coupler back on the bearing assembly first. V side goes towards the bearing assembly. Insert it on the shaft of the bearing assembly, making sure that the set screw is over the little dimple on the shaft, and tightening. And just a little twist, nothing too tight. All right, now that you've got the coupler on the bearing assembly side, again, make sure that your capacitor cover is up, the dimple on the motor is up. Cradle it in your arm and bring it up to the coupler half and slide that coupler half onto the motor. Take your Allen and start to tighten. And again, it'll guide itself into the dimple on the motor. Just a little twist. What you want to do is you want to take the motor and put it into place. Make sure your coupler is in its proper position so it's pulling by these ears. Hold the motor in place and align your motor, motor bolts and the motor bolt holes. Again, snug. Don't over tighten. Now we're ready to rewire it. You can rewire it by what you wrote down earlier as far as color codes. And you'll tuck these back in. And you'll take the electrical box cover and put it back on. Hold it in place. Tighten the cap screw, turn your power on, and you're ready to pump some water.